After review, the runner's foot touched out of bounds at the 39-yard line with one second on the clock. Clock will be reset to one second. It'll be first and ten. Chris, Eli, Adam Griffith is out on the field. It'll be the freshman to kick. My goodness. The redshirt freshman from Calhoun, Georgia. Cody Mandel is going to hold it because they work together. Remember, Eli, with the distance of this field goal, Auburn also put a return man back in, the, in his own end zone. So yeah. if the kick were to come up short, Bama's got to go make a tackle as well. All right, the play does have to end. It'll technically be a 57-yard try. Chris, how gusty is the wind? We can see the tassels moving. Looks like they will be. A, that'll be a factor. It's an extra club. I know that. If you're into it, it's uh, it's at his back. And you mentioned the 52-yarder. I'm told it was a playoff game winner. In high school. In high school, but uh, he made that one again with the wind at his back. If it stays true to form, that's probably a good five-yard win. Well, this would be, this would tie the longest field goal in Alabama history. Van Tiffen had a 57-yarder. 57 yards to win the Iron Bowl. Cody Mandel. Spots it. Kick on the way. It's got leg. It is sailing. It is short. It is grabbed about eight yards deep in the end zone. Brought back to the near side. Run down the near sideline. There's nobody there for Alabama. Auburn's going to win. Auburn is going to win the Iron Bowl on a run back of a missed field goal. I don't believe there are any flags down, although I could not see one due to the maze of people on the field. Eli made the point that Chris Davis was stationed back to return the kickoff. He leads the country in punt returns, and Alabama has offensive line-type athletes for protection. That's a mismatch. Chris Davis goes back 108 or 109 yards to win the Iron Bowl. Auburn wins 34-28. Fireworks going off. The Auburn Tiger players at midfield. The Alabama players walking disconsolately towards their locker room to our left. A 57-yard field goal attempt by Adam Griffith was short. Chris Davis returned it, found himself free along the near side. There were no Bama players around. No, because that, that unit is not accustomed to covering kicks, and so all of the coverage was down the middle, and once Davis got to the edge, it was Katie bar the door. Just an unbelievable ending. I don't believe what I just saw. Uh, spoken by Jack Buck originally, and echoed by Phil Savage here today. Two miracle finishes in a row for the Auburn Tigers. One of the storylines today, the red zone updates. Alabama six trips into the red zone, only three scores. Auburn students totally covering this football field. The Red Zone Update brought to you by Red Baron. Pick up a Red Baron pizza before the next game and get a taste of the tradition. Vogler couldn't get the return man. Chris Davis, nobody else could. Davis takes it 108, maybe 109 yards for the game-winning touchdown as the clock expires. Absolutely unbelievable. Tonight, the kicking game. Bama missing from 45. 
Bama missing from 34. Bama missing from 47. Excuse me, from 44. And then the uh, missed field goal from uh, 57 yards away returned for the touchdown. Auburn wins. Well, the party continues. It looks like uh, Times Square on New Year's Eve down on the Auburn playing surface. The Auburn Tigers win 34-28 in the Iron Bowl in a game that uh, gives them the Western Division Championship and the trip to Atlanta next Saturday. Alabama just uh, a bit off all day today, Phil. Yeah, Bama really didn't take advantage of some of the opportunities, especially down in that high red zone area. And you go back two years ago, LSU at home, the same problems that plagued Bama that fateful night in 2011 jumped up and got Alabama tonight. But, wow, to lose a game on a returned field goal attempt you don't see this one every day. No, you really don't. And I'll be uh, very honest with you. If you had uh, told me that Auburn was going to run the 300 yards tonight against Alabama, uh, I wouldn't have thought so. Uh, 297, the exact number, but uh, close enough. Uh, I never would have thought that uh, the Alabama defense would have been uh, that uh, porous today against the Auburn Tiger offense, which was uh, quite an offense. Well, they just, it's, it's almost like a triple option. And as a matter of fact, the touchdown play that Auburn got to tie the game yeah. really is a knockoff of a wishbone type play. The quarterback takes the ball down the line. Now you've got a blocking back downfield. I'm told that linemen are given three yards clearance leeway right. before they're downfield but wow i don't know how you coach defense when you see lyman release downfield and the quarterback's running the ball to his left and then flips it over your head uh, it's almost impossible now to play defense at any level because of the way the rules are set up alabama couldn't quite pull it off auburn wins 34 28 coach nick saban joining us now from down in the locker room coach uh, good evening and a tough tough night it was no it really was you know but um, this is a tremendous rivalry great tradition great fans you know on both sides you know I, I feel a little responsible for letting our fans down um, we didn't play our best game today but this senior group that we have here has done a tremendous job accepting the responsibility that comes with playing football at Alabama they've had a tremendous amount of success and I really feel bad for them because now they can't reach some of their goals and expectations of what they wanted to accomplish. But everybody knew that we were in, you know, like March Madness, man, the NCAA tournament. We had three games to play if we were going to be able to win a championship. And we had to win each one of them to get to the next spot. And uh, they understood what was at stake and um, what the goal was and how we needed to compete as a team. But I'm really proud of our team i'm proud of our players but uh we didn't make the plays today that we needed to make and um you know we had lots of opportunities to put the game away and you know missed a field goal uh, made a field goal had a penalty missed a field goal after we had a penalty um you know fourth and inches we didn't make a first down um and everybody would say well, why didn't you kick a field goal well we didn't make one from there before but uh and I felt really good about our short yardage. And um, then we, we, you know, we busted the coverage on the last touchdown. So uh, we didn't make the plays down the stretch that we needed to make to win the game. you got to give Auburn's team a lot of credit. You know, they played hard and they played well in the game. And um, they made the plays to win. You know, we told our guys they had a returner back deep. Griff hits uh, uh, field goals from 60 yards. Um, and I know it was a little bit of a long shot that he would hit it there, but we did have the win behind us. And um, we told everybody, they got a returner, you got to cover. We practiced that. And I don't know what happened over there on the right side in front of their bench. I didn't see, but we didn't have any coverage over there. And I didn't do a very good job. So um, horrible way to lose a game. Uh, but also, you know, we have to be responsible. I'm responsible uh, for the things that we didn't do well uh, to win this game. Coach, obviously, though, there were some highlights, high moments for Bama. That, that 99-yard uh, play to Amari, that was spectacular. That, that took guts to call, let alone execute as well as it was done. 
Well, it was a big play. You know, we 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 made some plays on offense. We ran the ball effectively at times, but uh, you know, it didn't stop their running game well enough, probably, and that really hurt us. And um, you know, but we did get some good third down stops there in the fourth quarter, and certainly had our opportunities, but uh, just just. You know, it didn't finish the game like we wanted to, and I just feel really bad for our players and our team that uh, we, we couldn't have made a play or two there that would have made a difference in the game. Bill, you want to jump in? Yeah, Coach, it really would have, would have made a difference. And this offense is hard to get a handle on. I mean, the touchdown play, you know, you're going to see the film tomorrow. They're going to say that, yes, the linemen were legal, but I don't know how you coach your defensive backs when they've run the ball six times in a row and then the quarterback takes it to his left and drops it over your secondary's head when you've got a blocking back and three linemen at least three yards downfield. Well, I, you know, I, I, I think they have to do something about this in college football. You know, when you run running plays and linemen go downfield and block and then you're able to throw passes, it's very difficult to coach the players, but, you know, that was a man-to-man coverage for the corner. Um, he should have stayed on the guy as a run-pass guy. The safety was supposed to come and fit second on the quarterback. So he should have stayed with the guy regardless of that. But uh, I, I don't disagree that some of these plays that are being run in college are almost impossible to defend. Coach, you address this with your team, and I know it's so tough to do in the in the midst of a few moments right after a, a loss like this, but I know one of the things you talked about to these guys is the season as a whole and, and how proud you are of them, not just for the effort they gave today, but for what they've accomplished over the course of this season. Well, I am. You know, this team has come a long ways from the beginning of the season. You know, we made a lot of improvement as a team. I think the players have worked hard. They've competed well. Uh, the coaches did a great job with this group, and... Um, I just feel badly we weren't able to finish like we needed to to uh, be able to have a success and have an opportunity to play for the SEC championship.